Assalamu alaikum guys, how you doing? We're back in the car doing chats in cars with Dr. Lawrence Brown. How you doing? Yeah, fine, thanks. Doing good. You get a chance to watch, there was this documentary, I'm gonna get your thoughts on it. It's called, it's called, I believe, Expelled, No Intelligence Allowed. Have you ever heard of this documentary? What it pretty much focuses on is that you have, within the university setting, you have professors who usually argue, argue for Darwinism and atheism, but then this documentary goes and points out that there are many scientists, professors who argue for a creator, but they're silenced, and then how they're silenced, and, and, and they're blacklisted, they're pretty much bullied. And it just kind of gives a different perspective. Why? Because usually you go into this university setting and then, the, you know, the, um, the students, you think, wow, these are just the, the academics. They're, everybody is on the same page that there's no God. But no, there, there are silence. Those who usually are in this atmosphere, in this setting, they're silenced. That's why you don't hear much about them. Did you ever hear this documentary or any, what are your thoughts on this? I haven't heard of that documentary, but um, I have heard of the sort of the academic bullying, uh, the fact that the fact that professors who are teaching creationism are basically shut down. And um, I have the impression, first of all, that that's happening less. I mean, I, and I have the impression that more professors are coming out in favor of intelligent design or in favor of a creator or in favor of just showing that evolution just simply doesn't work. Um, or another way of, uh, I, I prefer to just point out that uh, evolution does not eliminate the possibility of a creator. Okay, because uh, because the point is that evolution, natural selection, and so on, it might exist, it might work, but it's just, if it does, it's just under the direction and under the control of the creator. But so in any case, yeah, there's, uh, I know there's, there's this academic prejudice which is continuing to persist until this time, sure. Have you ever heard of this individual? He was for about 50 years, he was a well-known, notorious atheist, Anthony Flew. He wrote a book recent, not too long ago. He went from being an atheist to writing a book, There Is a God. And he was, for 50 years, he was out there preaching that there, there was no God, but he had an epiphany, something happened, and he changed his ways. The reason I mention him, because he was a pretty, mo he was like the Richard Dawkins of, of his time, called Anthony Flew. Have you ever heard of him? Yeah, actually, uh, I mean, in this circle, he is super famous. Um, I mean, he's he was not just, you know, an atheist professor. He was like the atheist professor. He, he was probably the most famous atheist professor of all of them during his day. And um, his... Uh, you know his acknowledgement that there is a creator and that um, and that evolution uh, does not does not fully explain our existence. Um, that was that was a shock to the world of atheism. Yeah, and it was it was just fascinating fascinating to see how he uh, how many years it took, but then he eventually worked around to that conclusion. And then, of course, as soon as he did that, <laughs> you know, you know, everybody is like, "Oh, he's great. He's with us. Oh, he's wonderful. Oh, he's with us." As soon as he switched sides, you know, they were denouncing him. Oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, how do you go from like being this super intelligent, amazingly, amazingly well informed, intelligent professor to, uh, you know, to being an outcast? Actually, actually, just to make a point, you know, it, this is this is why I really talk about the pretensions of science when it comes to the atheist scientists, because 
really their decision points are more emotional than anything else. They're not based on science. If they were based on science, they would have, they would have um, acknowledged the fact that natural selection and evolution cannot explain the diversity of life and the complexity of life as we know it. They would have acknowledged that a long time ago. I mean, the biochemical studies, the, uh, the probability studies, the statistical issues, and so on and so forth, these hard, 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 uh, you know, sciences where, where you can run the numbers on things like what's the probability of developing a medium chain uh, protein to serve as a gene sequence? What's the probability of having that happen by chance? and just crunching the numbers and finding that you can't even fit the min minimum gene sequence hypothesis, you know, uh, or minimum gene set. You have to have a certain number of genes for an organism to, to function, right? And if you figure out what the chances are of developing uh, those genes over the period of existence and the number of elements in the universe and so on. Probability and statistics just, just shows that it's basically impossible. And, uh, and not impossible, but impossible to, the, to, to you know, a, a huge degree. And uh, so here's where scientists stop paying attention to science. It's like, oh no, I don't like that answer. So, you know, so we're just, we're going to say, but there is still this tiny, 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 infinitely tiny chance. So we'll just say there's a multiverse to that, to that number of chances and we're the lucky ones. Uh, this is not science. This is, this is just reverse engineering your own conclusions. And so this is why I say that, you know, these guys really, they're just putting on the pretenses of science, but it's not true science. What advice do you have for the university student? Many, we've heard stories, true stories, where the classroom will be full the professor asks everybody, how many of you believe in God? And almost the whole class raised their hands, but towards the end of the semester, after the professor's done his dawah, and he writes on the board, at, in the beginning, there's no God here, and then he asks the same question. He says, how many of you believe in God now? And at the end, he's probably converted more than 80%. Only two, three people raised their hand. So now for people getting into that environment, for the student, the Muslim students, or just anyone in general, what, what advice do you have for them? Well, basically, you need to arm yourself with the evidence. And I feel that the strongest argument that you can make, really, is just to acknowledge that the concept of natural selection, the concept of evolution, and the concept of God are not mutually exclusive. In other words, there's no reason why you could not have both. If you're going to say that natural selection is operational, why can't you say that this is the mechanism God set into play to, uh, to lead to the diversity of species? Why do you have to say, okay, I can explain uh, the diversity of life through nat natural selection, so therefore there is no God? No. I mean, if you have if you have the belief in God in your heart, just um, just coming to to see a possibility that natural selection selection could be operational should not uh, should not uh, conflict with that belief. You could just say, okay, so uh, so yeah, so this is you know this was the mechanism that our Creator used to uh, to develop the diversity of life. Now, that's not how I feel things happened, but I'm just saying that in the defense of a belief in, uh, you know, a belief in a creator without conflict with the concept of uh, natural selection, you have to realize that these things are not, like I said, not mutually exclusive. Yeah, now like I said, that's, that's just not how I feel not how I feel things happen, but that is a way that you can argue the case. So by the way, don't be fooled. You give this question to a scientist, say, where did the life come from? Don't be fooled. They're going to say, well, you know, maybe life was seeded onto this planet from outer space. They're not answering the question. 
they're just deferring it. Okay, so where did it come from? It came from outer space. And they got it from outer space, from another outer space. But what are we talking about? One alien gave it to another alien, gave it to another alien, or your one planet gave it to another planet, to another planet. Uh, that does not answer the question, where did it come from? In the end, trace it back, it had to come from somewhere, right? And that's the question that no, no scientist, no group of scientists have ever been able to answer. The other thing is, you know, in, the, in this uh, discussion is, when you're talking about evolution, again, Go back before that. Stop, stop thinking about biological evolution. Ask about chemical evolution. Chemical evolution, there's no ex acceptable explanation for it until now. And, uh, and you, cannot get, you cannot even get to biological evolution until you get over chemical evolution. And that has also never been explained. You guys enjoying some of this? Important information I was sharing with you. Stay with us. I don't think you said don't let the professors bully you. Yeah, don't let them. You know, don't let the professors bully you. Don't let them. You know, uh, don't let, let them make you think that you know because they're a professor and you're a student, you have to come to their side. That's just uh, you know that's just ridiculous. When it comes to spiritual arguments, you can't intellectualize spirituality, right? You cannot intellectualize spirituality. You either have it or you don't. And uh, you don't, you, you, you can't get a degree in, in spirituality. So if you're a believer, hold on to that belief. Don't let, don't let the professor bully you. Uh, and keep in mind, I mean, really keep in mind that there are well, there are professors out there, there are PhDs out there, there are researchers out there in their fields and more who speak as eloquently or better in favor of intelligent design, in favor of a creator, having recognized that the arguments for chemical evolution, biological evolution, the presence of life to begin with, just simply are not satisfied by these rather simplistic what I think are, are, are now just recognized as fallacious formulas such as evolution such as Darwin's concept of evolution just real quick uh, Darwin the many of these arguments in this philosophy stems off some people don't know if you can break it down this uh, ha have you heard the you know probably this crystal theory you, you mean the idea of life beginning on a crystal in a, in a hot bath of what? And when you when you look into it, it's really absurd. It's just way out there. Yeah, you know, and the, and the thing is that I think that the I think that these scientists are sort of, you know, once you catch them on an explanation that doesn't work, they throw out another explanation, assuming that most people are not going to research it deeply enough to realize that they that that next explanation they throw out is just BS, okay? And, uh, and that works for most people because most people do not investigate. They just hear, oh, there's another explanation, okay, I'll take that, you know? Because uh, quite frankly, most people are intellectually lazy, okay? Or they don't have time for it or whatever. But the fact of the matter is that you have scientists who do devote themselves to this and, uh, and they have basically proven that these other theories are just childish. And, th and that's why I'm saying that uh, y y uh, th these people who are arguing evolution are, are basically doing so with the pretensions of, pretensions of science, not with real science. Because r real science is following the evidence where, where it uh, points you. You know, you see the evidence pointing in this direction, you go in that direction. You don't just say, no, I don't like that conclusion, therefore I'm going to make up another equally weak explanation for the theory that I do like. That's not science. When you hold on, when you know, la ilaha illallah, you hold tight to it. La ilaha illallah, you know it, you understand it. Unshakable, unshakable. Assalamu alaikum.